Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Howdy traders, checking in on the broader market. This is Netflix earnings reaction, initially a 15% plus bull move, giving it back. Still above where we closed, but pretty much a non-event with where it stands right now. So we did see Amazon react to Netflix earnings, but no one else in the tech sector really reacted. So non-event for the sector and the market as a whole. And here we are approaching where we closed. So option sellers are the winners. We'll see what happens when the market opens tomorrow. But as of right now, giving back all of that after hours strength. Oil, talk about oil. First off, this makes my day. Save someone from a big old loss because they didn't fully understand what was going on in US oil. I helped them realize that and they exited before the 25% down day. So that's great. Glad that worked out. Now we have US oil tracking. US oil, the ticker is tracking the June contracts which have rolled over. And we had a ton of volatility today. USO was halting. And then USO came out with news. And their news was, we're going to change the way that the ETF is structured because of the way things are happening right now with oil. So we're going to be looking at June contracts. I believe it is 20% July contracts and 5% August contracts. Read the USO news. Got to double check myself. 20% July, 5% August. I believe that's what they're doing. So those futures contracts, because it can't contango, they're higher. But we're currently focused on the here and now contract. But just be aware, if I'm watching US oil, that's going to be tracking June. But what's going on in July and August is going to have an impact on USO. So essentially, if I want to know everything that's going on with USO, I need to be watching June, July, and August all at the same time. So for USO, bounce, huge bounce off of the low, but just looking for an hourly lower high on that bounce. Show me some four hour trend changes, show me some daily trend changes, and then we'll be talking about some significant shifts in momentum. Yes, it's a big bounce percentage wise, but it's just looking for an hourly lower high. So trends will continue to be our guide in the short term. And right now, all these trends are currently pointing bearish. So SPY, SPY with a gap down open today. So a lot of people were talking on the messages for YouTube and saying, that's not like you. What are you doing making a trade on fundamentals? So I've said this many times, I'll say it again. Trading, you have fundamentals and technicals on a spectrum. And in my opinion, if you are 100% fundamentals and 100% or 100% technicals, that's a bad place to be. You don't want to have tunnel vision. There are successful traders right here on the spectrum and right here on the spectrum that do really well. There is no formula for what's the best place to be. I am not 100% a technical trader. I am a 94% technical trader, but I was interested in the Canadian marijuana stock sector that I made a lot of money in because we legalized. That's a fundamental reason. The fundamentals grabbed my attention and then I used the technicals to navigate that sector. So I definitely pay attention to fundamentals. And for me, the bearish swing trade into today from yesterday was based on number a couple of things. Number one, I knew to just be looking for an hourly lower high with yesterday's bounce. So that was setup number one. Then I was looking bearish because I saw what was happening with oil. And again, fundamental reason, the herd retail does not understand what's going on with oil. Uncertainty equals fear. Fear is a very strong emotion. So as the oil news settled in and as everybody heard about it for the last 15 hours, we saw a gap down open and a lot of market weakness and the weakest market day that we have seen as far as the gap down and bear follow through we pretty much had one more day that was more bearish since the bottom. 
But again, it's just the fundamental mindset. So I liked the risk to reward. I thought it's a lot more probable we're going to open lower than higher. And then the technicals affirmed my lean. The bear break on increasing bear volume of the low of yesterday at the end of the day confirmed my fundamental thinking for me. So I did exit 60% of my bearish position this morning to lock in some gains, and I'm still in 40% of that short. And I put my stop under 275.69 or above it at the end of the day, and we rejected, and I'm still in it right now. So at this point, because I took 60% off, it's not a huge position. It's not going to make or break. But what we're looking at is the 12-hour time frame on SPX 500 USD. And I expect a bounce in the near term because we have pulled back straight from the high with no bounce on the 12-hour time frame. That being said, the size of the pullback is such that I would be anticipating a 12-hour lower high compared to the top on that bounce. And keep in mind with these 12-hour candlesticks, that bounce could take place over multiple days. So that's something I'm keeping an eye on. We are still in an hourly downtrend. We are holding the low. If we break and change the hourly trend and get over this 12 period hourly exponential resistance on futures that has rejected the price five times now, if we get over that, we zoom out to the four hour and we look for a four hour lower high. If we change the four hour trend, we zoom out to the 12 hour chart and that's when we look for the potential of a 12 hour lower high compared to 2890. And again, that's going to take a while to play out. So in the short term, I'll be fairly quick to exit my short tomorrow if the bulls prove something to me. On SPY, I consider, where's our last higher low? Our last daily higher low, as far as I'm concerned, 271.41. Little higher low and then continuation and no clearly established pivot point from there. We did have 275s as a base of support, which was our 12-hour higher low on that futures chart. That did break today. But if you ask me, is SPY in a daily uptrend? I would say yes. But again, the size of the pullback, I would also be looking for a SPY daily lower high when we do bounce from here versus the high of the bounce. IWM, the line in the sand level, 114.56 would have to break for the bears to take over. That would confirm the downtrend on the daily and that would confirm our weekly lower high has been set. If we hold that level, we're not going to get that bear confirmation. And the bulls will be staying alive, so to speak. So that is the level. And if it holds, we'll have a tightening range. High of the bounce, higher low, lower high, higher low, tightening range. Let's see what it looks like on the four-hour time frame. And it's not clear, so forget that. But a tightening daily range if 114.56 holds. And we'll go to the financial sector now because it's doing the same thing if 2106 holds. We close near the low of the day, but if 2106 can hold, we don't confirm the daily downtrend. If it breaks, I'm going to keep swinging my short because the bears will be proving our weekly lower high is very clearly set. And we're now in a daily downtrend if 2106 breaks. QQQ, solid pullback today. And QQQ is actually weaker than the financial sector from when the bell rang today. Hourly RSI got crushed. We saw a solid hourly oversold bounce. The hourly lower high was set. We knew that was the most likely scenario on a bounce. So 207.89 resistance. Support 203.63. If that breaks, we continue the hourly downtrend. To set our daily higher low, we have to change the hourly trend back to the bulls. We had a gap at 203.42. That has not filled yet. And I would say there is a little support level here at 198.75, but really if you form a clear pivot point above 180.86, I would consider that a daily higher low. Again, just like SPY, size of the pullback at this point means even if we bounce, we have to be watching for the potential of a daily lower high to form. And look at XLF, that's exactly what happened. This pullback, still a daily higher low compared to 1936, but we knew to be looking for a daily lower high on the bounce because of the size of the pullback. XLV, daily consolidation. Anything above 92.66 is a daily higher low. Hourly trend has to change back to the bulls. Weak hourly bounce, hourly bear flag confirmed. SPY rejected its hourly bear flag from confirming by the time the bell rang, but XLV confirmed it. So bears are still in control of the short term. 
We're watching for a daily high or low, but there is no indication of that daily high or low being set. Biotech sector daily inside bar. If it breaks bearish and we lose 90, 89 support, daily consolidation will be underway and we'll look for a higher low compared to 83.78. If it breaks bullish, the bulls keep complete control. But coming back down to reality a bit today, down 3% after three very bullish days in a row. SMH is showing us weakness. We had stair steps higher. Higher lows have been broken. Increasing bear volume, close near the low of the day. If you remember a few videos ago, we were watching the four hour rising wedge. This is gonna be a sloppy drawing because it's quick, but you get the idea. We are watching a four hour rising wedge that has broken bearish. Is this our weekly lower high being set? Certainly looks like it. We still have the pattern of a higher low every week unless we take out 122.75 support. And on any bounce, I'll be watching for a daily lower high to form compared to 133.95. TLT, gap up and some profit taking. Anything above 167.27 keeps the bulls in control. It's a bit choppy in the short term, but the daily chart's clear for me. Higher low as long as 167.27 holds. So that's the line in the sand level. And when I say line in the sand, that means that's the most important level for me. And as long as that level holds, the daily trend will not change. The bulls will keep control on the daily if 167.27 support holds. The VIX. So we had a little double low, 37.30, 37.60. We broke short-term resistance. Hourly chart, just looking for a higher low to form. More of a pullback than the bulls would like to see. Four-hour chart, still healthy overall. Bigger picture, I'm looking for a weekly lower high on this move compared to where we came from. Question is, is that weekly lower high going to be at 48? Is it going to be at 68? We'll have to take it one day at a time. Still keeping the hourly and four-hour uptrend intact. Not a very strong close, especially with SPY closing near the low of the day. I know they're not inversely to each other, but in general, VIX bulls want to see strong closes when SPY closes weak. Not the case today. And the bulls in the VIX and in volatility want to see 44.60 hold tomorrow morning and head back up to test the high of today. Gold, trying to set a daily high or low, still in an uptrend, but have to change the four-hour trend bullish. Anything under 17.02 would be a four-hour lower high. We did drop to a lower low without a ton of bear follow-through. So if we can change the four-hour trend, we'll be looking for a daily higher low to be set. I am still in a GLD swing position from April 1st, and I will stop out when the daily uptrend is lost. My stop is under here for now. And if we set a daily higher low and see the bulls head back towards 1700 and beyond, I will move up my stop again and just keep walking it up with the daily higher lows. Silver, same thing. Trying to form a daily higher low. No sign of it being set yet. Keeping in mind, silver is absolutely looking for a weekly lower high and it already looks like it's been set. Topped out at exponential resistance, started pulling back, and that's the big difference with gold, where gold blew through weekly resistance, is well above exponential support, very different setups. GDX is a beauty, equilibrium perfection. We rejected from the high of resistance by the penny yesterday, and we bounced off support by the penny in pre-market. So 29.45 is a double low, 31.13 is a double high. We are currently 61 cents from resistance, and we are currently a dollar and seven cents from support. So we are closer to a resistance break than a support break. We'll see how this pattern breaks probably tomorrow, if not tomorrow, certainly Thursday. Natural gas, starting to pull back. What stands out to me is bare volume. Look at the hourly candle here. Highest hourly candle of volume in a while, and it was all bears. Four hour chart, you could consider the four hour uptrend lost. We set support, we tried to see continuation, and we dropped to a lower low. I would need to see a bear break of 177.8 support to then be looking for a daily higher low compared to 153.6. We did not break $2 and 203, the most important resistance levels for me. Let's see if we form a daily higher low and give it another chance. So that's where we stand overall. Bulls still holding on. And it's now we're going to have to wait till next week for tech sector earnings. 
I'm very curious to see once oil gets its act together. We know oil's not staying at zero forever. I'm curious to see if the oil bounce when it comes is going to help the market bulls with correlation. We'll have to see. I have no idea. But that's something I'm going to be watching for. So S&P 500 futures 12-hour time frame has clarity for me this week. And even if we bounce, we'll be watching for the potential of a daily lower high. Right now, SPY could see a bounce of 4 or 5%. To get back to resistance, where do we stand? Roughly 5 plus percent. So if SPY bounces 4% over the next two days, it could still just be a daily lower high, which is something I'll be watching for as well. Hope you had a good day out there. Stay cautious with oil in both directions. We're going to see short squeezes. We're going to see bulls get crushed. We're going to see bears get crushed. We're going to see people who have no idea what they're doing lose a lot of money. And I just hope that you are not one of them. And I hope you have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. So starting to prepare the side of the driveway. This is old wood from the raised beds that was left over and I didn't feel like moving it last year. So just stuck it on the grass and I've got about 120 sunflowers that I planted that are just now starting to sprout up in seedling trays and found some snakes and all kinds of cool stuff under here. But I want to talk a little bit about being conscious of other animals. You can see these little moles we're digging under here. But being conscious of them because I could just start moving all this stuff in the middle of a nice sunny hot day and I would be exposing a bunch of worms they would dry up and a bunch of ant nests and smushing all these bugs. And the human species is pretty darn egotistical thinking that the universe revolves, revolves around us. And I don't think being intelligently developed with big brains is a good enough reason for our lives to matter more than anything else around us. So, I try and be conscious of insects and everything. So what I do is I send eviction notices and I'll just go around and move these boards a few hours before really moving them. I'll just lift them up and you can lift it up and see a nest of hundreds of ants and a bunch of eggs. And if you come back in an hour or two, they'll be completely gone. So they get the idea. They know they need to move. There was a little snake under here yesterday. That's why this one board is still here and he's now gone. So. Also choosing to do it on a cloudy day, moved most of them, just avoiding the midday sun because if I were going to pick it up, everything would get cooked. And if I give them an eviction notice, they've got plenty of time to dig deeper into the soil for the worms to get away. And that's the way to live in symbiosis with the animals around you.